Hi everyone, I am Susan Jacob and in this video I am going to share my journey through the conundrums that I found were associated with phacoemulsification of a white mature cataract. So here was the first case and things seemed to be going along perfectly well till I suddenly saw the sudden deepening of the anterior chamber and when I withdrew my phaco probe just a little bit I found this punched out hole in the posterior capsule. Now that was something most unfortunate to happen because this happened at a time that I was least expecting it to uh, happen. And what do I do now? I do a glued IUL scaffold which means that I implant a glued intraocular lens below the nuclear pieces and then go ahead and emulsify the nuclear pieces over the glued IUL using it as a scaffold. I then used a vitrectomy probe to cut the vitreous as well as uh, remove the cortex in aspiration mode after making sure the vitreous was cut. I was thus able to uh, bring this case to a successful close and was pretty satisfied till I came to my second case of a white mature cataract. So here goes the rexes. I brought the nucleus out. I've removed half the nucleus and the second half is being emulsified when suddenly I see this wide gaping hole in the posterior capsule and believe me even though the nucleus didn't sink through that hole my heart definitely did. Now I salvaged this situation by placing the IUL as a scaffold over the iris and continuing to emulsify the nuclear pieces. However, I realized at this point that what was causing these repeated uh, posterior capsular rends in these cases of white mature cataracts was the fact that there was very little epinuclear shell that could hold the posterior capsule away from the phaco probe. So the weak posterior capsule would flutter up and get caught in the phaco probe before I could even say Jack Robinson. And uh, you can see that even now there wasn't much cortex for me to remove. Uh, the nucleus removal was mostly all that was required. I did go down and make sure that there were no fallen fragments and once I had done that, all that was left was to convert this uh, IUL scaffold into a sulcus fixated intraocular lens using a handshake technique with two micro forceps. Now once I realized this, it was time to go on to my next case of a white mature cataract and you can see that in this case, to get an adequately sized rex and adequate working space, I decided to use this beautiful ring, the B-hex ring designed by my very good friend Suvain Bhattacharji from India which gives gives a very good and easy uh, to apply pupillary dilatation. Now once I've got adequate pupillary dilatation, it's time to do a rexis and you will see that as soon as I make a small nick on the anterior capsule, this milky fluid comes out uh, and uh, what I do is aspirate this and then uh, make sure that the anterior capsule is flat, the pressure in the anterior chamber is high enough before I continue and do my capsular rexis. Now even if I did uh, rexes successfully in this white mature cataract, would I be able to go ahead and complete the emulsification of the nucleus without getting a posterior capsular rent? I knew I could do the IUL scaffold technique in the eventuality of getting a rent, but was there any way of actually preventing this rent from happening? Something that would hold the posterior capsule back while I would uh, emulsify the nucleus and something that would not allow the posterior capsule to move forward or flutter forwards and get caught in the phaco probe. Now the IOL scaffold technique was one that we had described for posterior capsular rent in 2012. More recently, I got the opportunity to review a beautiful paper by Dr. Rohit Om Parkash on the use of the IUL scaffold for white cataract even in the absence of a posterior capsular rent. I thought this was a brilliant idea and I decided to try it out in this case. You can see that I brought the nucleus out and again when you look into that capsular bag, you can see that it's completely empty and if I decide to go ahead and emulsify at this point, I know that I'll cause a posterior capsular rent. So instead what I do is I uh, decide to pre-place an intraocular lens scaffold which means that even in the absence of a posterior capsular rent, I've already put the IUL scaffold in place. The leading haptic is inside the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is over the iris. You can see that I now go ahead and boldly emulsify the nuclear pieces with no fear of the posterior capsule suddenly coming up into the phacoid port. And I have of course used the air pump while doing phaco emulsification to have increased uh, fluid flow into the anterior chamber and that gives me a deep anterior chamber throughout which uh, helps to safely emulsify these uh, nuclear pieces even in the presence of an IUL scaffold. Once both the haptics are within the capsular bag, the B-hex ring is very easily removed by using a micro forceps. Viscoelastic removal completes the case. Here's a post-operative appearance of the patient with a clear cornea and a, a well-rounded pupil without any tears or micro irregularities of the edge. I do hope Dr. Om Parkash's adaptation of the IUL scaffold technique will be useful to you in the future for your white cataract cases. Thank you so much.